Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to teach you how to fold a yin yang crane. This was a really fun one to design and I hope you enjoy folding it. I'm going to be using 10 inch kami in the video, which works great, but it is possible to use smaller. I folded this one with 6 inch kami. It's a lot more difficult to fold with the 6 inch kami. I also have one with 7 inch or with 12 inch. The 12 inch worked great as well, but in the video I will be using this 10 inch since it's just a little easier to film with. I'll have a link to some different sizes of kami down in the description if you want to get a different size. Now this one is from double tissue and this one from triple tissue. Each were about 20 inches. If you know how to make double tissue that's really ideal for this. Basically as we add the color changes, the paper will shrink down to a square that's a quarter of its original size. And then from that point we fold a traditional crane but the paper will have a lot more layers than it would normally have. So this is an intermediate model and I'm going to show you two different ways to fold it. The first way will be where the dots on the wings are squares. This version is much easier to fold and to fold it this way basically you'll just skip one of the chapters in the video. I'll explain exactly when and where to skip once we get there. Now the second way to fold this is to get the dots as close to a circle as you can. This involves a lot more difficult shaping steps and some really small details. I use tweezers in the video, which I do recommend. I'll explain it all thoroughly, but if you struggle with this part, you can always skip it. It still looks great with the square dots. Also, to get all these layers to hold together, I'll show you how to do some wet shaping at the end. It's nothing difficult, but it does require a couple tools. You'll need a paintbrush and some clips to hold the layers in place as it dries. I use clothespins. If you skip this part, it will look like this with the flaps a little looser. So this one is with the wet shaping and it just looks a lot cleaner when all the layers are held down. You could also glue the layers if you want to. If you've never wet shaped before, this will actually be a really easy one to learn with. Now that should be all you need to know. I also do have some links to some origami t-shirts I designed down in the description. But let's get down to folding. <laughs> Now I am starting with the colored side up, which doesn't matter so much for this one, but it's a little easier if you start with the same side up. Now we're going to valley fold in half along both of the diagonals. So we'll bring this top right corner down to the bottom left corner. And hold those corners in place and then crease it corner to corner. And then unfold. Next we'll bring the top left corner down to the bottom right corner. And then crease that one all the way across. And then unfold. Next we'll turn the paper over. Now we'll valley fold in half along the horizontal and the vertical. So we'll bring this left edge over to the right edge. I'll make sure both of those corners line up and then you can crease it all the way across. And then unfold. Now we'll bring this top edge down to the bottom edge. And crease that one down. And then unfold. Next we'll bring this top edge down to this horizontal crease in the center. Crease that one. Now turn the paper over right to left. Now we'll bring this bottom edge up to that same center crease. Now 
Next we'll bring this left edge into the center vertical crease. Now do the same thing with the right edge, bring that into the center vertical crease. Next we're going to look at this layer that's inside and we're going to pull that layer out starting with this corner, pull that straight down. And then as we do that, we're going to form this crease that we already have in place that runs all the way out to this corner. And then when you look inside, we're going to form a new crease that runs from the center out to this corner on the bottom left. Should happen pretty naturally if you just bring this corner all the way down. I'll show you what happened inside. Now we're gonna do that same thing on the right side. Just grab that layer on the inside, pull it straight down. And then as you pull that all the way to the bottom, you should form that crease that's underneath. Next, we're going to take this layer that's on the top left and we're going to be swinging that out over to the left. You notice there's this crease that runs right here. As we swing that out, we're going to form that crease. And then as we press it down, we'll form a new crease that runs all the way into the center. Next, with this flap on the bottom left, we're going to turn that into a squash fold. So we're going to open this pocket up. And as we squash this down, we're going to be forming a new valley fold that runs from this corner into the center. We'll be bringing this crease out to the edge on the left. And just squash that all down. Next, we'll rotate 45 degrees counterclockwise. So it looks like this. Next, we're going to make a valley fold between these two points. We're gonna do this with just the top layer. So we're gonna swing this point up to the top. Do the same thing on the bottom, make a new valley fold between these two points by swinging this corner down to the bottom. Again with just the top layer. Next we're going to fold this flap behind, we're going to make a mountain fold that runs vertically right between these two points. I'll pick it up and show you what I mean. Just mount and fold that straight back. We already have half of the fold in place. Once you tuck that behind, you should be able to close it up and just press down to form the rest of that crease. Now the step works a little differently on the bottom part. We're going to take this flap and we're going to swing it into this pocket. If you just open it up and then swing that point through, then you can close it back up. Next, we're going to work with this flap on the right. We're going to swing this point into the center. We already have the crease in place for this.
Next, we're gonna swing that same point out to the corner on the right, making a new valley fold right here. Next, we're going to bring this edge into this edge, which will bisect this angle right here. Next, we're going to swing this point out to this point right here, which will make a new valley fold right here. Next, we're going to form a squash fold. So you'll need to open this pocket up between these two layers. So open that out to the sides and then just squash this down symmetrically. Then we're just gonna fold this point out to this point. And we have that nice color change for the dot. Next, we'll repeat all those steps on the left side. So we're gonna swing this point into the center. Then swing that point out to the left. And then bisect this angle. Then we'll bring this point out to this point. And then squash fold, spreading those layers apart. And then Bring that point out for the color change. Now we have one last step that will get these points into the right position. So we'll look at this one on the left. We're gonna swivel this flap over just a little bit. I'll show you how this works and then I'll explain it a little more. Let's do a small swivel. And now you can see that these two points line up with this edge that's underneath. I'll look at this a little closer from the back. We just made this new crease right here. Then we do the same thing on the right side. Let's make a small swivel. Now these next steps are where it starts to get quite a bit trickier. This is where we'll start to form these rounded edges here to make them look a little bit more like circles. But there are some really small details in this part so it can be pretty difficult to follow. If you struggle with it, you can always fold one that looks like this. This still looks really great and has these cool color changes. Basically from the step we're at right now, you'll just fold a standard crane. If you go down to the progress bar, I have all the chapters listed there, and the next one will be called Standard Crane. So you'll just take the paper as you have it right now, skip to the section called Standard Crane, and you can fold one that looks like this. But all these next steps coming up will be to fold one that looks like this with these curves here. 
We're going to be starting with this flap over here on the left. We're going to be swiveling this crease down. So to do that, we'll just tug this over a little bit. You can see that crease starting to move. Now where we want to swivel that, a good reference is just to have this point line up with this edge that's underneath. It doesn't really have to be exact. But this new crease should go all the way out to this point. And next we're going to swivel this crease. So we're going to take this edge and we'll just move it back up to where it was. Now, these points should line up with that edge that's underneath it again. Now this extra crease will show up in the final model. If you want to fold one without that, um, you can just skip the step we had before and come right to this one when you fold this flap. But it looks just fine if you have that crease there. Next, we're going to take these edges and we're going to fold them behind just a little bit. So I'll show you what I mean. That was a bit much. So about right there, essentially we're turning this into an octagon at this point. Now these steps are a lot easier if you have some tweezers, so I'm gonna use them from here on out. I'm actually gonna fix that crease I just made. Should be about right there. You notice that edge just got folded behind. Next, we're gonna take this point on the right and fold it back just a little bit. And then do the same thing on the left and on the bottom. I'm gonna rotate the paper to make it easier. Now on the bottom, you'll see there's this layer. We're doing this with just the top layer. Now you should have a little octagon. This one on the left wasn't too great. It's pretty hard to do this while filming because I'm staring at the screen on the camera to make sure things stay in focus, but that's good enough. Next, we want to round each of these edges a little bit more. So each of these points, we're going to just fold back slightly. I could do this just a little bit. I'm gonna flip this all the way around actually. Do that on each of the points. The only one that's different is going to be this one. And I'll show you that one when I come to it.
Now for this last point, essentially it's just a tiny inside reverse fold. But to do that, I'll just tap the tweezers right on this little corner. So it folds down a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. If you get all the other edges right, it should look pretty round. Mine's definitely not perfect, but it's good enough for this video. You'll want to take your time to make it look as good as you can if you're folding one for yourself. Patience is often the difference between a good fold and a great fold. Next we just repeat all of those steps on the right side. So I'm going to orient it like this again. And we just tug this edge down, swiveling that crease below. And then swivel this edge back up. Then fold this edge behind. Then fold each of these three corners behind. I will be speeding up parts of this. Now we have an octagon and we need to fold each of these eight points behind. Now from here, we're just going to be folding a standard crane. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Now for this step, we're going to form a preliminary fold, which forms a few creases all at the same time. And when we do this, we want this flap and this flap to remain flat. And then these two points will get folded in. This is easier to show from the bottom. So we're gonna flip this over. Just make sure you keep it oriented the same way. Then we're gonna bring these two corners down to the bottom. As we do that, a few other folds will start to form. We have all the creases in place already. And then we're gonna bring this final corner down to meet the others. Next, we need to form pedal folds. And if you've folded a crane before, usually you would pre-crease these pedal folds, but with all these extra layers, it actually makes it more difficult. So we're gonna do this without pre-creasing. If you've never done a pedal fold before, but have still made it this far, I'll try to link to my video on pedal folds right here so you can get a better understanding of how they work. But we're going to be folding this flap up. And as we do that, 
We're gonna bring this edge into this edge in the center. And then do the same thing with this edge on the right. And then we'll look at the top and we're going to bring this edge into that center. Same thing on the right. As you do this, you can just let this part of the flap swing open. We can fold that over later. And then we'll make sure we have some firm creases now. Now we'll take this part of the flap and fold it behind right along the edge that's underneath just to form the rest of that. It's the same thing with this layer that's right here. We're going to fold that layer over. So this whole flap should be purple or whatever color you're using now. Now we'll turn the whole thing over. Then we need to make another pedal fold on this side. Again, we're doing this without pre-creasing, so we just start to fold that up and bring these edges in. And then swing this edge into the middle, right along that edge underneath. And then fold this flap behind, right along that edge underneath. And really we were just forming pedal folds like you would with the standard crane, but there was just a lot of extra layers floating around. Um, next we need to bring both of these edges into the center. We'll start with this one on the left. Just make sure it runs all the way down to the point on the bottom. And then this little section right here has a bunch of extra layers and gets really thick. So if you want, you can fold it just beneath it, um, but if you wanna have it look perfect in the end, fold it all the way into the center and just press really firm on that part where all those extra layers are. And then bring the edge on the bottom right into that center. When you have a lot of layers like this, it can take a bit of pressure to get sharp creases. Next, we'll turn the whole thing over and repeat those steps on this side. We'll bring that edge in. And bring the right edge in. Next, we need some inside reverse folds. So we're gonna take this point on the right and we're gonna inside reverse fold it up. So we spread these layers apart. 
Swing the flap right through the center. Just do this really carefully since we have so many layers. Some of the paper has a bit of tension in this area. You don't want anything to rip. Swing that up through and then close it up. And you can swivel this around where you like it. I usually line it up with this edge that's right here. Then do the same thing on the left side. Now we can fold these wings down. You just fold the wing down as far as it will go. And then fold down the other wing. And pull them out at a 90 degree angle. Now we just need to form the head. Now you can fold the head on either side. I prefer to do it on this side. So these extra edges are in the back, um, but it's a personal preference and uh, if you're not going to do the wet folding I'm going to show you, it'll usually look a little better to make the head on this side because these tend to fold up a little bit. So when you look at it from this side, you can still see them well. If you fold the head right there, it's harder to see them. Um, but I am going to do the wet folding, so I'm going to fold it on this side. You just do the reverse fold for the head. Then we have our yin yang crane. That looks great like that. Next, I'm going to show you some wet shaping. Now, if you've never wet folded before, don't be scared. This really isn't wet folding, it's just a little bit of shaping. Essentially, we're just dabbing some water on and then holding everything in place to let it dry. But the difference between these. This is without any of the wet shaping. You can see these naturally want to just fold themselves back up. But then if you add just a little bit of water, like I'm going to show you, it will look like this and everything will hold itself in place nicely. All I used was water for this. You could of course use glue, but it's not necessary. I prefer to do this all with just water. But if you want to use glue, basically you'll just glue each of these layers down. Um, it'd be pretty easy to do that. But I'll show you the way to do this without any glue, just only water. All you need is just a little bit of water and a paintbrush. Really any paintbrush will do just fine for this. And then some sort of clamps to hold everything in place as it dries. I prefer to use clothespins. I have all sorts of different ones in here. These end up leaving marks, so I don't like them. These work pretty well, but they're a little small. I find that the best option most of the time is just normal clothespins. They're also really, really cheap. I have a few different sizes. Now, if you've never done any wet folding before, don't be scared. This actually isn't wet folding, it's just some wet shaping. And this is a particularly easy model for it since we're only using it on a few creases. So if you've never done it before, this would actually be a great one to learn on. Now, if you look at the wings, the spots that we're going to be adding the water to are just this edge right here mainly. That's where it wants to unfold the most. So I'm gonna add water on the inside of this crease right in here. And then I'll add it on this crease on the inside and the outside. And then the inside of this crease here all the way. 
and then I'll add it to the outside of the crease as well. Basically as many of the layers as we can access on this edge. So we'll just dip the paintbrush in the water. You don't need much water for this. Just a little tiny bit and then you can run the paintbrush right along that crease. Open it up to get to the other creases. Really just a little bit of water on each of these creases will be just fine. Now don't worry, as you add the water on the outside, the other color will start to show through, but once it dries, that will go away. And then if you want this dot to be held in place a little more, you can add some water to those creases as well. So I'm just gonna dab some in here. And that's really all we need. Then you'll just hold everything in place and then add some clips. Just two of these big ones works perfectly for one wing. Next, we're going to go to the colored side. We're going to do the same thing. Just going to add some water right here. This has the crease that's under there. Just all those same spots. Now, this side does have the printed color on it. So you tend to need a little bit more water. Um, you still don't need very much though. Now, anytime you're wet shaping, just make sure you go really slowly because once the paper is wet, it's really easy to rip it. And then that's all you need. You could add some water to some other parts of it if you'd like, if you need the head to be a little tighter or the tail, but this one looks pretty good, so I'll leave it how it is. And we just set it down and then you'll need to let it dry. Really, it only needs to dry for about 10 minutes. I usually do 20 or 30 minutes just to be safe. All right, I'm gonna take these off. And there it is. Hopefully yours looks like this. Now these should hold themselves in place really nicely. I hope you were able to fold that all the way to the end. I hope yours looks great. Now if you're struggling or you have any questions, leave a comment down below. But if you liked this video, make sure to subscribe and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.